Now, to show you what a great investigation, I mean, I, I really, really have such contempt for these people in the 9-11 Commission. This is their entire investigation of what happened up there at the towers. This is the 9-11 Toronto report. Don't confuse it with the NIST report, which is a 571-page lie. I found one very interesting point here, which I would like to read. It's about a dust cloud, which hit the people. Page 230. A wave. A hot, solid black wave of heat threw me down the block. Page 231. And then we are engulfed in the smoke, which was horrendous. One thing I remember, it was hot. The smoke was hot, and that scared me. With this in mind, I would like to explain what happened with Tower 1. Pfeiffer was the first chief into the building. Right away, a guy from the Port Authority told him the damage was somewhere above the 78th floor. But all you had to do was look around. It was obvious something had happened right there in the lobby. You just, you just saw that all the windows were blown out. The lobby looked like the plane hit the lobby. Now, there's one testimony of a, a fireman that went, fireman and a cop went into, uh, he came into the west side. That's the entrance to the North Tower. He looks to the side, the express elevator 6, 6A and 6 and 7, they're on the south side and north side. So you're walking in the west side. You have these towers or the uh, elevators to right and left. Now, he said, I couldn't say for sure, but they looked like they were clear. Everything was fine over there. But the thing that he noticed, that the freight elevators, which are in the middle, the doors were totally blown out. Again, none of these explosions are a part of the official story. How could explosives be placed in the World Trade Center Twin Towers with 50,000 occupants not knowing about it? Well, this is the floor plan. Let's enlarge it and take a close look. We note that the core structure the columns of which are immediately adjacent to almost all of the elevators at the lower levels, certainly. If you had access to the elevator hoistway, you would have access to the core columns and beams, and no one would see you. How about an elevator modernization, which we know was going on the nine months prior to 9-11? Yes, Elevator World March 2001 documents it. In fact, they were in the middle of this modernization. Ace Elevator had the contract. We're not conspiracy theorists, but it's pretty obvious that somebody needs to be asked some very key questions. There are people who noted that the elevators were locked in turn and that there were guards placed at these locked elevators during the modernization. So I was talking to the supervisor, and at 846 we hear, BOOM! An explosion so hard that pushes upwards in the air. Upwards. And it came out from below us. From the mechanical room that was right below us. And it was so loud and so powerful that all the walls cracked. The false ceiling fell on top of us. The sprinkler system got activated. And everybody started screaming so loud because they didn't know what was going on. And the first thing I'm going to say is that a generator just blew up on the B to level, the level below me. And everybody's screaming. And when I'm going to verbalize it, six to seven seconds after, we hear, bah! Oh, the impact all the way on the top of the building of the plane. Two different events separated by s almost seven seconds, separated by time. And now, I work in the building for 20 years. I know the difference of a sound coming from the top and one from the bottom. To transfer the energy of an underground nuclear explosion through a standing building, the elevator shafts need some preparation. 
After fortification and modernization, you connect the ground levels to the nuclear device. It is critical to open the building on top in order to create the nuclear chimney. Only thus pressure equalization on top is guaranteed, otherwise the building would crack on ground level. Yeah, here's one of the guys who can tell you I'm okay, all right? Here, hold on. You want to call, you, you call your mother or something? Don't worry about me. You need to make calls right now. Right. The 401 should have taken the Hours after the attack, many smaller explosions rumbled through downtown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero time. Ten seconds to collapse. Incredible. Okay, I had to go find people who need help. I don't think I'm one of them. You okay, sir? Okay. Can I just get a toot off your respirator? Can I get a toot? I'm seeing a couple of clean breaths. That's good. Okay. Back to you. Now, compare these explosions uh, to a known explosion on the left here. Upward, outward arching streamers, pyroclastic volumes of dust, symmetrical display like a mushroom. Does it look like a gravitational collapse to you? <laughs> 